Hello and welcome to The Killer Bits. My name is Toby and joining me today is Connor Ullman. Am I saying that right? Yep. yep Look yep. at that. Fantastic. That's already <laughs> that's already 10 out of 10 journalism right there. Connor <laughs> Ullman, who made the game Abletus. And this is an interview. Yes. <laughs> anyway, welcome, Connor, to this YouTube video. I suppose. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you could sum up what Abletus is, what would you uh, say Abletus is? <laughs> Well, uh, it's an action-adventure platformer, and newly roguelike, actually, is a big change we've made, uh, where you play as a creature named Parvis, and you kind of run around this big world, uh, killing things, and trying to figure out why you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I've played quite a lot of Abletus now, mostly at work while nobody's looking, and it's <laughs> <Best> just... place. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just, it's just fucking phenomenal. It's very sort of... Dark Soulsy, in that you're very fragile and everything just murders you. It's great. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that was actually the main inspiration is Dark Souls. I played Dark Souls, um, I played it for like 40 hours over one weekend, like when I, when I bought it, and it was just like amazing. Immediately became my favorite game and has been since. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> I was like, I really want to make a game that feels like this with the combat that's like this, and you know that. When when you when you're playing through the game, you know, like when you play a game like Skyrim, a lot yeah. of times what keeps you from progressing is you you don't have the levels, you know, you just kind of mm -hmm. need to grind out some levels in order to get to new places and you know kill harder things. Whereas like a lot of Dark Souls is about your own skill level at playing the game that really improves. Like you can get levels and <laughs> better equipment, but they're not as impactful as just being good. <laughs> For me it's the second it's the second that I figured out what poise and iframes were that I just became good at Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> like Yeah. Uh, it's I remember I saw a guy do a run through of Dark Souls and I think it was like half an hour or something. He ended up cheating past uh, the last few bosses, but it was amazing <laughs> to me to watch him, like, yeah, no armor. He uses, like, his starting battle axe for, like, the first three bosses or something. It's because it it's like, a great weapon. You can't fault it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, that was something that I really appreciated about Dark Souls was that they really gave you the tools to succeed at the beginning, and yeah. the main thing restricting your progress was you sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's kind of been what's restricting my progress the most uh, Abletus right now. I, yeah. <laughs> I am fucking abysmal at the game. But at the same time, it's so entertaining. I mean, like, throwing your spear is such, like, a, a, a balls-out mechanic like you throw it and then you're like oh god i'm unarmed yeah yeah just go like five seconds just trying to mill or mill about for a minute until you get it back <laughs> exactly and like another thing that i noticed about it was that i spent the entire game like hiding behind a shield which the back of my shield is the thing that i look at the most in dark souls so like <laughs> you've really like if that was the impact you were going for like i remember when uh Abletus was first shown to me i was just like i was I was kind of blown away. I was like, I need this in my fucking life. And my, <laughs> my producer was like, yeah, it's just 2D Dark Souls. And I was like, what? <laughs> but you just said that you've taken it roguelike. How's that going to impact things? Um, well, the main change is, well, uh, we actually, we talked to the publisher and they were just like, so have you thought about doing a roguelike? Because we have a storyline, mm. uh, which I won't go into the details on it, but basically the storyline works very cyclically. Like it works perfectly for something that's a roguelike where... Uh, you know, you'll be doing multiple runs that are very uh, similar, but also a little bit different. Yeah. And I was like, that's a really interesting idea. So I started thinking about what that would mean. Uh, the main things that'll happen are the player's going to have health now. Um, oh. It used to be, you know, just one hit kills um, with a little, like, you could get these health things that are green uh, yeah. along the way to give you a second health. But um, but that'll also mean permadeath. Uh, things do deal a lot of damage to you, like three, four hits I think right now will take you out. Mm. Um, so it's still like hard not to get hit, <laughs> <laughs> um, and mistakes will really stick because health aren't going to be uh, that common. Mm. Um, but yeah, other things we're gonna uh, start putting in some equipment upgrades. So like you'll be getting some armor, uh, shields, uh, shield changes. Um, also like some general, we're gonna call them enchantments. Like maybe mm. rolling farther uh, or faster or. Um, adding like a, something that happens when you press space when you're in the air, which right now doesn't do anything. Um, oh, what you mean like air dashing or some shit? Yeah, like that? yeah, possibly, some, possibly some along those lines. Yeah. You, you see, if ever you combine the words like air and I don't know any kind of thing, it just makes it sound like <laughs> ten times more awesome. Like air jump, yeah. air dash, 
air roll. So cool. Yeah, I would say, like, we might add something like an air roll that turns into, like, kind of a dive bomb of sorts that you can oh, use man. to attack enemies. Things lovely, like that. lovely plunging attack. That's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also we're going to have um, the levels will be partially procedurally generated. There will be some parts, um, uh, probably the majority of parts of levels that um, will be consistent, but then there mm. will be pockets of it that will uh, change as uh, on every playthrough and include different upgrades randomly uh, placed. So That would be really, really awesome. I mean, like the thing that I've most enjoyed about Bleatus so far is just the exploration. Uh, sort of oh, yeah. trying to like figure out where everything is, and if it's a roguelike, <laughs> I I don't know if that that's going to be sort of the same or better. I mean, it's going to make me want to see more things more often. Like now, yeah, that, it... at the moment, there are areas of Oblitus that I just avoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's kind of part of it. I mean, there's um hmm. in in the current version of Abos that I sent you, we have a part where um, there's like a waterfall. Yeah. Oh and... my god, it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, uh, we're, <laughs> but if you if you go into the water at the bottom of the waterfall, um, you'll come across this kind of like mini boss. Oh, that, uh, that big fucker. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, and, he is. Uh, he's an issue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but part of it is, I mean, there's no actual benefit to going down and fighting him. Mm. Uh, it's something that you might stumble across, and he's a tough enemy, and you know you you have to break down a door, and you climb up a ladder, and then you end up. Basically, right, well, like a little bit farther than where you fell. Because <laughs> part, part of the point is supposed to be, it's not always good to just go, you know, find something new. But most of the time, it is good to find something new. <laughs> just, uh, I'm trying to make the world feel very much like the world actually is, where you know, there's not a treasure <laughs> chest at the end of every hallway, and <laughs> you know, death, things like that. Some deaths just aren't glorious. That yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, this. Oh, I'm, I'm unreasonably hype. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, so, uh, awesome. <laughs> have I been saying it wrong then? Because I've never heard it said out loud. It's oblitus, not oblitus. Oh, the, the pronunciation's been all over the place. I call it oblitus. <laughs> uh, my original partner, who's since left the project, he called it uh, oblitus, I think. Oblitus. And, yeah, no, don't worry about it. It's kind of... <laughs> I guess it's meant to be written. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like, one thing that I have noticed as well is that all of your concept art is ridiculously beautiful. Who does that? Um, well, we had um, Gabriel Verdon do some promo art for us, mm. which um, that actually made a bit of a splash on Reddit and got us some of our initial attention. Yeah. Uh, but um, the person who's doing the art and the current concept art and stuff is Sarah Gross, uh, at 2BitArt on Twitter. Oh. Uh, she's been great. Yeah, we've been working <laughs> with her for a couple few months now, and uh, she's been fantastic. Oh man, brilliant! It sounds like you're really enthusiastic about the project. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I interview developers, <laughs> and I'm just like, "Why did you make this game?" And they're like, "We want to make money." It's like, wow. yeah. and it's just like, "Wow, that's uh, that's great. Thanks for the the content, <laughs> there, champ." But yeah, you sound uh, like you sound like you're really into the project, which is really refreshing. Oh, definitely. This is like kind of my uh, big pet project thing. I mean, I. Uh, I've been making games for a while. I've made like a dozen games or something, but they've all been kind of flash games. And, um, <laughs> I ended up making a really big adventure game at one point called Seedling, and right. that one like did the best of all my games um, by critical acclaim and stuff like that. And I was like, I really love you know doing an adventure like an action adventure sort of game. Hmm. And then I played Dark Souls, and I'm like, I'll do an action adventure 2D Dark Souls game, <laughs> and I was just really excited to do it and. I had a few bumps in the road with, you know, I had a partner, and then he left, and then we had an artist, and then they left, and, <laughs> and all this stuff. And then I had to take a four-month break to go to school, and then uh, it's been crazy. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it, and it's lasted through all these things just because I've been so excited. <laughs> I was going to say, like, how long's the development cycle been so far? Like, it's been in production for, what, like a year, two years? Um, yeah, about a year, I think, mm. which is far and away my longest project. I think the second longest was Seedling, which I only worked on for about four months. And oh, blimey. So, yeah, and this is my first team project, too, so it's we have, uh, I think, six people currently mm. contributing pieces to the game right now. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's pretty big <laughs> that's gotta be it's i can't big. i can't even imagine like having six people working on something that i was behind like that's gotta be that's gotta feel pretty good oh it does definitely yeah no <laughs> i can't, 
can't get too high on my horse, but uh... oh no no, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna suck your dick or nothing over this. Like, it's, ju it's just a video game, but at the same time, it's a really yeah. good one. Like I'm I'm oh, super excited. Hey, don't worry about. It. I'm I'm really really excited. Like the roguelike thing sounds like it could be a big change as well. Yeah, luckily, um, it's not going to actually change all that much of what we've done so far with the game. I mean, the the biggest impact it'll probably have is on the forest level. We're going to have to um, work in how to add in some procedural uh, mm. uh, level uh, parts to it. But when it comes to just adding enchantments and armor and like uh, new shields and things like that, those are e really easy to put in. And um, <laughs> you know, we're not going to have to take very many steps back in order to move in this direction. So. Yeah, I mean, you must have put a lot of thought into it so far, sort of how much of your stuff are you going to have to overturn radically? Um, well, yeah, mostly the forest level. Um, we had to make a couple small changes to the storyline. Yeah. Because uh, the storyline, I mean, initially the game was meant to be kind of a one playthrough, and then you've probably seen most of the game, and it, there wouldn't be that much, uh, that much of a reason to come back to it. Um, but with the change, we'll, we'll, it'll basically make it so, you know, it'll be different on every run, and you'll be able mm. to, you know, you won't be able to see every upgrade in, you know, a single run. So uh, this will make players come back and play a lot. So we had to make a couple changes to the storyline to account for the fact that, you know, players will be coming back to it. Um, with, uh, you t you're required to talk to one NPC, is mm. what we have planned. And originally the NPC, you know, uh, had never met you on every single run, but now they expect you to come and, you know, they're immortal and stuff. But that, <laughs> that's all just kind of minor things that um, had to change. It sounds like the whole project, and I hate to use this word, is getting a little bit more, like, epic. Mm, mm. I mean, if if suddenly <laughs> this, th this thing is immortal and it knows that you're coming, then it's gonna it's going to make it feel... Like, oh shit, what's happening? Like, I think that you might have the sort of that you've definitely got the atmosphere of Dark Souls down, but I think oh, you might thanks. actually I think you might have like the mystery element in if you go like down that road. Yeah, I mean kind of part of my develop my, part of my design philosophy for a lot of it is, you know, put in a thousand small things and hopefully people notice ten of them and yeah. are happy to have discovered them because they weren't obvious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, like, most of the game, uh, there's four main areas of the game. Um, mm. At any one run, you only have to go to two of them. Okay. And, um, and yeah, we're just trying to keep things very much... Uh, like, we're, we're players will be really, like, excited to find the things that they find because they weren't <laughs> obvious. And very implicit storytelling where, you know, you're going to have to notice things, kind of like cave painting sort of stuff that'll really, like feed into what the storyline is more so than, you know, talking to NPC here and then moving to NPC over here and, you know, things like that. No so, quest markers type of stuff. Just sort Yeah, of... no, nothing like that. We're, we ah. actually really want to make it so <laughs> it's all about figuring things out and, you know, making risky decisions at times because you don't really know if something, if you're going in the right direction, things like that. Well, I was going to say, like, I've only got up to that big troll thing. Like, I just can't, yeah. I just can't kill it. Yeah, <laughs> like the game. The game is ridiculously difficult once you get to that point. Yeah, I mean the 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 real goal with it is to make it very much in the Dark Souls way, where um, if you know how to kill something, it's very easy to kill. Yeah. And not just figuring out where the weak point is, but knowing like <laughs> the strategy for how to hit the weak point without getting hit. Attack um, patterns and all the rest. Yeah, of, yeah, those things to memorize. Oh man, I love that shit. Yeah, I mean, the, the troll guy, I mean, nowadays, I mean, I've been playing this same level for months now. <laughs> we're yeah. actually getting into the content generation step, so <laughs> we're getting into more of adding new areas and things like that. But yeah, I've been playing this level for a million years, and I can, you know, kill that troll it so easily now, <laughs> just because I know how to do it. <laughs> you see, now I feel nothing but horrendous envy, and uh, <laughs> it's not a good emotion to feel mid-interview. Um... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... It's not that big of an issue, Connor, don't worry. So why don't you, I mean, we're at the, like, 15-ish minute mark now. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Like, where are you from? What's your background? Um, well, I'm from uh, uh, Michigan in the U.S., uh, around Ann Arbor area, for anybody who knows it. Um, <laughs> I'm a student at the University of Michigan. I took a semester off to work on this game, so um, I am would have been a junior this semester. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, what, just turned 21 recently. 
God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 25 and I've never accomplished anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you, well, you're doing interviews. That's, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's something. It's something. I don't know if it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, tell you what, it feels good. It feels good to actually get to talk about things that I want to talk about. But this isn't about me. This is about you. <laughs> all right, all right. The oh, twenty-one, well, the twenty-one-year-old <laughs> Cotter Ullman, <laughs> who's making the Dark Souls-like rogue thing. Yeah, yeah. What well, I, I think I've been making games. Uh, when I started when I was like thirteen with Game Maker. I did oh, that my. for about four years. I don't think I finished. <laughs> I think I finished one game over the course of those four years. <laughs> Well, Probably was... 40 started projects, but yeah, and then, uh, then well, moved back, into Flash. So. Back at school, I was the same way. I had that click and play. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, they went on to make Game Maker, that same studio. Oh, so wow. I know where you're coming from at this point. <laughs> like, oh, man, like distributing them on floppy disk. It was just the best possible years. Oh, man, I remember <laughs> uh, the first game I ever sold was... Uh, was a game I put on a CD and a friend bought it for a dollar. <laughs> and from that day, you knew, deep down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And this uh, will be the next copy of a game I've sold. I've done sponsorships, but I've never actually sold copies of a game. So, <laughs> seven years later. <laughs> so this is like your commercial project. Yeah, yeah, it's my first, you know, wow. sponsorship deal here. So, I'm pretty excited that's, about it. That's pretty great. Like. Like, congratulations, first and foremost. Thank you. <laughs> I know, I'm oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm really enthusiastic about this project and I want it to do well. That's awesome, yeah, no, me too. It's, it, it's great to hear you say uh, that you really like it, because, man, sometimes I just get the feeling of, like, looking at the game, I have no idea if it's good or not, it's impossible for me to tell. I just keep adding things to it and hopefully it, you know, is good, but it's tough without hearing people tell you, oh yeah, no, it's great. It's like, well, okay. Well, <laughs> if, no, if nobody's telling you, then I feel okay about telling you. But no, <laughs> oh, like, I, I, I remember the first time, like, I stumbled onto the waterfall, and I was just like, holy shit, because it looks like nothing else in the game. Like, everything else has this weird sort of, I don't know how to describe it, because it's 2D, but like, cell shady aesthetic, and then you get to the water, <laughs> and it's like, all blobby. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just so yeah. excellent. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Like, I mean, is the water meant to be, like, fluorescent yellow, or is my graphics card fucked? Oh, uh, no, yeah, it is. Uh, it's, okay. it's meant to be fluorescent yellow. Okay. Um, yeah, we're we're actually um, probably going to be trying to make a few changes to the water engine to make it a little bit prettier, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it's got that whole surreal edge to it. Like, uh, yeah, definitely like, does. When I saw it, I was like, is that safe to touch? And then I touched it. And, like, it's that kind of discovery that <laughs> gives... Oblitus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Question mark. It, it's uh, it's Edge. Um, yeah, that's and... really what we're going for. Yeah, make it second guess your typical video game decisions that mm. you make. I mean, like even the, as I said earlier, the the simplest thing, like your second mouse button or whatever on controller, is throw spear, and like I came up to one of those plants that eats you. Yeah, and, yeah. And I was just like, right, I'm gonna throw my spear at this thing, and I completely missed. And I was like, it's, <laughs> it's not so bad because everything's fine. And then like three mobs just showed up. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I was like, suddenly I want my spear back. <laughs> yeah, it, it was exactly like that. And like, it, there are moments like that which I take it everybody that's played the game is going to be able to relate to. Just like, man, I threw my spear. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make oh, people feel like fucking idiots. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't take much to make me feel like an idiot. And a manager manages it more often than not. Yeah. Like, but one thing that I have been doing is, uh, like I said, I play at work quite a lot, and I work at a bar. Mm. And uh, sometimes I'll get customers like asking sort of what it is. So I think you know you're not. You're doing okay. The customers are all interested in it. That's good. Yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> Hopefully you'll... I mean, how long do you reckon it's going to be until the product is done? Um, we're hoping to be finished um, sometime in July or August area. That's that's the plan right now. Mm. So, um, yeah, I've got some months left, but it's not too far off and when it comes to the scale of some releases. <laughs> And like, what do you want? Uh, what, what do you want Oblitus to sort of achieve? Like, and this is the most tacky question, which you, know, you can you can just say money if you want, but <laughs> yeah, why? No, it's, <laughs> money's not the big thing, really. It's just, yeah. uh, 
I don't know, I guess... I'm just hoping to have a game out there that I'm really, like, proud to have and kind of does a lot of things that I haven't been able to do with games so far. Hmm. Um, and also, you know, like, having an adventure game out there. I'm just really excited to read what people think of, you know, the storyline and things like that. Since it's so implicit, you know, I, when I released hmm. Seedling, um, that game, that um, storyline was far less implicit. And hmm. yet, I had a lot of, like, conspiracy theory comments about what they thought <laughs> the storyline meant and all of these things. And it was, like, it was all really interesting to have the audience feedback like that. And I'm kind of really excited to have that in a hopefully much larger way with Oblodus, you know, not being a flash release. Um, so that's kind of what I'm most excited for, is just to kind of hear what people think of it <laughs> so even though in seedling the story was like explicit they were like yeah but this is what it's really about oh yeah no i had this um i had this giant tree that you kind of get the impression <laughs> that it's magical because it's got runes and it's closed and stuff. <laughs> if you, you talk to this guy underneath the tree he says oh it's not magical it's just really big and <laughs> you know i had people comment like oh nice this is like a deku tree parody and i'm like what's a deku tree and i because <laughs> oh, I hadn't played it, I hadn't played Legend of Zelda, so this is like, oh, hey, all right, cool. And, I mean, I had somebody else come up with a whole like alternative storyline for like, you know, you you were another character in the game, but when they were younger and like all this stuff, I'm like, I, I actually was almost like, I almost want to use that for the sequel, but <laughs> totally did not mean that. <laughs> well, but it all fit, you know. Just do the so, just do the Phil Fish thing. Just wink and say that's what I meant. Don't worry about it. There it's we all go. Yeah. it's all art. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> man, like, so with Oblitus, I, I really want to ask you about the story, but if it's Dark Soulsy, then I understand that <laughs> you shouldn't say that much because yeah. half half the fun is going to be figuring it out. Yeah, e exactly. I mean, um, I guess. What can I tell you about the storyline? Um, well, what what about the character? What about uh, little spear dude? Yeah, Jimothy. yeah. yeah. Um, the name is Parvis, um, mm -hmm. which is uh, Latin for petite or small. Um, right. Which kind of we're trying to give you the idea that you know everything else is basically bigger than you in the game. Even like the birds are bigger than you. Uh, everything you fight is all larger. So yeah. it's kind of the intent is to kind of give you the idea of feeling small and. I, um, I did feel pretty small and powerless. <laughs> and, yeah. All right, that's good. That's good. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, you you start off the game. Um, well, here I'll give you the opening cutscene. Basically, the plan right now it might change, but the plan right now is to have a the big giant rock spire that will come out of the ground, and yeah. um, you'll come out of the ground with it, um, and you. Uh, don't know where you're from. You, know, you just basically popped out of the ground and you're like, I don't know why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> but I have a spear and a shield. <laughs> and then um, you kind of just go off into the world and try and figure out uh, why it is you're there and what you're supposed to be doing while you're there. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, it, it turns into implicit plotline and things like that. But um, generally it's going to be about people discovering things and exploring and trying to figure things out because most places aren't going to lead you uh to the next step in the storyline mm. so uh yeah we just mostly want people to explore and the storyline uh is pretty short but gives you that uh drive to go do that well that's exactly what dark souls did mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. and it's so gorgeous like oh man you're talking i mean i i don't know if you've seen any of the stuff on our channel but i love Dark Souls more than life itself. If I, <laughs> if I could live in Lordran, you know, I, th I think I probably would choose to, even though it's full of like terrible demons. Yeah, well, eh, I mean, I'm sure I'd <laughs> die pretty quick, but I do. <laughs> but that, but that's absolutely fine because death means nothing, apparently. Yeah, yeah, just respawn again, and it'll all be okay. <laughs> and that's that is another thing that I really liked about Oblitus. And if that's going roguelike, I mean, that that element will change. But it was just sort of th that feeling of oh, I fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just like throw yourself like a war of attrition with this game, just trying to get to the get... next next track point. Come on. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. like but roguelikes have that same sort of thing. It's just that you start way further back and then you attain more knowledge about power ups and Exactly. I don't know, man, you're gonna get a lot of variety and roguelikes are like super in at the moment, you know? Yeah, definitely. It was it was kinda nice. I mean I 
when uh, when it was suggested that we could go roguelike, I talked with uh, the other programmer on the project, Sean. I was mm-hmm. like, what do you think about this? And he's like, well, I love roguelikes, and I've been <laughs> playing almost exclusively roguelikes for months. And I'm like, yeah, well, same here. I mean, I've been playing a lot of, like, Nuclear Throne, FTL, Binding of Isaac, Legend of Dungeon, like all, and they're all roguelikes, and I yeah. didn't realize until, you know, I thought about it that really some of my favorite games that I've gotten hooked on over the past year have almost exclusively been roguelikes. <laughs> um, so I've played, like, uh, yeah, I, I'm the same, good. I'm the same way, I've played a lot of roguelikes, like every game that you've just listed, I've played to death. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the idea that a game with Oblithus's combat could be put into a roguelike mm-hmm. is something that I think that literally everybody in the world should at least try. <laughs> you know? uh, well, I'd be happy if they all tried it without Oblithus. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy if they all bloody paid for it, to be honest. Like, this is... <sighs> it's unusual to find a game in 2014 that I'm genuinely pumped about. Because awesome. a, a lot of things have been kind of terrible. Like Castlevania has gone down the tubes. I mean, Dark Souls yeah. Two is is great. I don't know if you yeah, played I'm, it yet. Oof. No, I haven't given it a shot. I'm really excited about having. Oh. I'm not sure if I want to wait for the PC release because I don't have a console in my apartment. Uh, but yeah, oof. I don't know. I really want to play it as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> Man, I've been, okay. I've, I've been playing it for a week. Holy shit! Yeah. They, they fixed everything. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I wondered if they were just going to kind of leave most of the formula. Uh, from the first one alone, um, based on you know the videos I saw, but I wasn't mm. sure exactly to what extent things are going to change. So, so they managed to, you know, take out a lot of the. They take it. They they <laughs> they've, they've, they've just taken out all the stuff that made it shit. Like the inventory system is completely like overhauled. Everything's lovely. Oh, nice. But I'm not going to spurg about that too much right now. Cause, right, no problem. Because <laughs> obviously this is a lovely interview. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, well, we're coming up to time, so uh, is there anything that you'd like the folks at home, you know, all three of our viewers, to know about Oblitus? Well, let's see. Um, well, we'll be uh, coming to PAX, actually. Um, oh, so, sweet. So if, if anybody's over in Boston uh, in mid-April, come over and say hi. We'd be happy to talk with you. Um, and uh, we've got a dev log up. We've been updating that. Um, Oblit.us is the website, so anybody can find things there um, <laughs> on development news. And, uh, yeah, just excited to have this thing out at some point. <laughs> how, ha- how happy were you to get Oblit.us? I remember when I first like saw that written down, I was like, oh, that's smart. That's clever. Oh, yeah, no, it was like <laughs> Oblitus.com. Oh, not there. What can we get? Wait, <laughs> Oblit.us. Let's see. And we had it. It was like, Yes. <laughs> Fuck! I, that must have made you so happy. Oh, definitely. But, but yeah. you got you got to take joy in the little things. I think. Exactly. <laughs> and that, oh, and that, I think, is a pretty good tagline for Oblit. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty <laughs> good about myself right now. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for watching, and thank you, Connor Ullman. You've been brilliant. Thanks for having me. Uh, dude, don't even worry about it. Like, I'm way too happy. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget that you can indeed like and or subscribe. And we've got a Twitter at twitter.com forward slash the kilobits and a Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the kilobits. Connor's website is oblit.us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Connor, any uh, any last words? Um, well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope you like Oblit when it's out. <laughs> <laughs>